Hey, it's Luke. Today on Out of Darts, we are going to show you how to properly charge your LiPo battery. Let's get going. One of the more common emails I've been getting recently is how do I charge my LiPo and what current rate to charge a specific LiPo on. Now I realized this is actually fairly confusing for a lot of new people because there are so many different chargers, so many different types of batteries, and a lot of different information out there. Now the first thing I wanna say is that safety is extremely important. Uh, LiPo batteries can explode if punctured, overheated, overcharged, or overdischarged. All of those conditions can be dangerous. Please read below the full safety briefing I have as well as read your manual. No matter what charger you get, you absolutely should be reading your manual and you should always follow the instructions in here. They supersede anything that I say because the manufacturer definitely knows better than I do. So today I'm gonna to show you how, uh, how to charge a LiPo on three different chargers and how to select all the settings and whatnot. We're gonna look at a SkyRC E3 out of darts charger that I've got on the shop, an S60 also by SkyRC, a little more advanced charger, and then a very advanced dual charger from ISDT. This is the D2, this is my personal charger. Um, these range in price here from about 18 or $20 to about 40 or 50 to 120 plus, depending on the time. Uh, side note, you'll have to excuse my hands. I've been gardening and I keep uh, mangling them. It's hard to take care of your hands some days. So starting off with the most basic thing, the first thing you want to do is look at your manual for your battery and determine how fast you should be charging your battery. You never want to charge your battery faster than you need to. It, it will increase wear on the battery and it can be potentially dangerous. You are always safe with any LiPo battery doing 1C and that is pretty much universal. So in the case of this battery, to look at the math, this is a 0.95 graphene, so 1C would be 0.95 amps. 1C on a 2200 milliamp pack would be 2.2 amps. So that's a very safe low charge. And on this pack, this is a 1.5, that would be 1.5 amps. Now most of these in the manual will tell you they can do much, much faster. For instance, this 0.95 can actually do a 5C charge according to the instructions. So we can very safely do nearly five amps on this 0.95. One of the biggest confusions I run into with customers is the confusion between capacity, which is milliamp hours, versus amps, the actual charge rate. Amps is the current flowing into your pack or out of your pack. Amp hours is a capacity rating based on a rate of one amp for a certain number of hours. This is a 500 milliamp hour pack, a huge 3S pack, and this, or also known as five amp hours. So if you pulled on this battery at a rate of one amp, it would last five hours. If you pulled at a rate of five amps, it would last one hour. Now, there are some inefficiencies there depending on what you're using and charge level, but that's the basic math. So the larger the number, the more capacity. Let's talk really quick about safety. I always use these LiPo safe bags or a large steel container to charge LiPos. The way this is done is you simply plug your battery into your charger and then put the battery inside here while charging. Air can get in and out, that way if there was an issue, it can vent, but this can literally save your house or your garage. I also never recommend charging a battery without being uh, in the house or present or in the same room, ideally. Another option is to charge outdoors, not in the sun, or to charge with an extension cord in the middle of a garage on a floor. That's another very safe location to charge because you're away from combustible items. It's also very important to use a LiPo alarm only when you're using your blaster. Do not leave these in overnight as they will kill the battery over time. Next, I'd like to talk about balance charging. Uh, that garners a lot of confusion at times. Balance charging is simply charging equally and individually the individual cells that are in your battery. This is your main power lead usually an XT60 in the Nerf hobby, and this is your balance lead. Now the balance lead consists of one wire for each cell and a common which is connected to each cell. So if you read across the voltage across the black and any one of those other three wires, you will get the individual voltages per cell. 
Now a balanced charger, which you should be using, is capable and requires this connector. It will charge via this connector or it will potentially monitor both depending on the quality and the how good your charger is. So we will start off with the most basic charger. This is very, very simple. You'll see there are no options except a 2S plug and a 3S plug on front. All you do for a charger like this is plug in until it turns on, it will start charging and it indicates all three lights are going. When those are done, they'll go green individually. So this is a balanced charger. This charger is not capable of just charging, but I do find that after a day of play, I'm fine to use the battery all day, then store it. It is okay to store batteries at a non-storage charge, but you will increase the internal resistance and decrease the de capacity of the battery over time. So that's all you do on this basic charger. If I was charging a 2S, it's the same thing. It's just a different plug. And this time we will only see two lights light up because there are only three wires here, the common and the uh, uh, two individual cells. So that's all there is to this charger. Now, again, I would charge this inside a bag like this and wait for it to be done. Make sure you charge in a safe place. Moving on to a more advanced charger. This is the S60 charger. It is capable of charging a single battery at a time and it uses both the balance port plug and the main XT60 lead to charge. There are adapters for a wide variety of different plugs. The polarity of here, of course, matters. We want to match positive with positive, negative with negative. This charger is pretty basic still. It's air-cooled in case it produces any extra heat, which is important when you're charging faster, since we do have additional options. It also features a balance port. To so start charging this, this pack, we're going to first plug in our balance connector, and we're going to start with the common, which is again the black there, and cells one, two, and three, you can see line up there perfectly. Then we're going to plug in our XT60 lead. Now, not to worry, this charger will not start charging until you tell it to do something. There are a lot of options on this charger, and it can charge other types of batteries, so it's very important that you go through and select the, the type of battery you're going to have. Now, we are going to charge specifically a lipo so i'm going to hit enter it is then going to allow me to change uh, uh, amps uh, cell count first so before you've done anything you can switch from 2s to 3s to 4s this charger is not automatic sensing as far as the cells so we do need to set it to match it is a 3s pack we've set it to 3s then when we hit start we're going to get our current rate since this is a 2.2 amp battery and I'm not in a rush to charge it, I might actually set that to 2.2 amps. That would be a 1C charge. 1C is always safe and it is always easy on your batteries. A 1C charge will always charge your battery in about an hour or less. Um, generally less because your voltage is going to be a little bit higher than a totally empty battery. Now this pack is also capable of up to a 5C charge. Some packs can do even faster. A 5C charge on this one would be 11 amps. That's 2.2 times five. But we're gonna go nice and low and slow. So we're gonna hit start. It's gonna let me, give me one more opportunity to change the S, uh, the cell count. And then after that, we're gonna hold start. And it's going to check that everything matches and then it's gonna let us start charging. Now at this point, we are good to go. We would then of course throw it back in our LiPo bag, connected to the charger still, of course. And from there, you can monitor what's going on. We can look at the end voltage, which is an option to adjust. Generally, I always leave these chargers where they were factory set. They are factory set to very safe ranges and that's generally where I would go. But 12.6 is normal for a fully charged LiPo. We can look at the individual cells. We'll eventually get to see the resistance there as well. The internal resistance will display below. And uh, this is giving us a percentage as well, which is probably fairly inaccurate. But um, that being said, that is all there is to this. Um, there's also a safety timer on this one that allow you to uh, override and manually shut off automatically when it hits that timer, just in case. Uh, I generally don't charge while unattended. I like to charge when I'm in my warehouse or in my garage in a safe place where I know it's not flammable. 
And that's really all there is to it. This will beep at you when it's done. You can simply unplug the battery and you're good to go. This is my favorite little charger. This is the D2 from ISDT. It is very similar um, to the S60. The one advantage that it has is a little bit more diagnostic, a few more manual features, and I can plug two at once. So its cell detection is saying that there are three on both, and this is a very similar thing. I've got it set pretty low here, but um, I'll go all the way up to basically max on this guy because 12 amps is the max per channel. That's only a little over 2C on this pack, so we actually can do it much faster. So again, do refer to your manual to actually see the fastest that they are meant to be charged. Some of the batteries will tell you right on here. Usually it's one somewhere between one and five C. There are some specialty batteries that can do much faster. Um, again here, this is very simple like the other one. You can choose the battery type and um, other, other parameters, individual cell voltage, how high you want it to actually charge. But I, again, 4.2, which is 12.6 total on a 3S, that's generally what I go to. Next up, we're gonna talk about storage charging. Storage charging is the act of putting your battery to a lower charge. This charge is both safer for the battery as far as explosive or fire generating energy, and it is better for the internal resistance of your battery, which will help the long-term capacity. Now, I generally, won't storage charge my batteries if I'm planning on using them in say just a week, but if I'm going to set them down for more than a week, then that's my general rule of thumb. Storage charging is just like charging. You're simply going to plug your battery in to the correct ports, hopefully. <laughs> and we're going to go through the options on this charger. We're gonna go over to LiPo storage. We are still on 3S. I. And as far as the discharge rate, now this causes even more confusion because discharge rates are completely different from your uh, normal rate. Your discharge rate is more like your blaster side. It's the max current that the pack could take. Now there's no reason to overstress the pack. So low and slow at a couple C is fine. 2.2 uh, would be one C. That's pretty darn slow. So we're gonna go um, considerably faster than that because I know the pack can handle plenty more than one C. And really this is, um, I'm gonna go at the max this pack can do. That's six amps. Um, I wouldn't, if you have time to wait around, do it slower. Slow is always better if you can do slow. So then I held that down and we are good to go. So this is just like as if this was connected to your blaster and you were firing the rev trigger, um, except it's gonna go at six amps on max. Uh, since this is a 2.2 amp hour pack, uh, six amp is what I just set this to. That is the equivalent of just three C. This battery can handle up to a 60 C burst. So that is still even maxing out the discharge setting on, on this charger is still very, very low when it comes to the drain on this pack. So it is very, very safe. Now, as I said before, the E3 simply cannot do storage charging. So if you were using one of these E3 chargers, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Just Keep in mind when you charge your batteries, don't charge too many extra batteries. Charge what you think you'll use. Use the battery until your LiPo alarm goes off and then store it safely in your LiPo bag. With the ISDT D2, the charging procedure is the same as the storage charging. So to storage charge, we're just going to go up to storage. You can see the cell voltage target is 3.8. This is adjustable and five amps. We'll probably up that since this pack can certainly take, this is the equivalent, well, let's see. We'll make this nice and even. If I go to 8.8, .8, that is 4 uh, 4C. So the error there was actually just that uh, my little balance plug was loose. <laughs> so now we are headed into storage charge. You'll hear the fans ramp up because it's uh, pulling a, a current from the pack. It has to dissipate that heat. This one will beep at you real loud when you're done and that's all there is to discharging. So to recap, no matter what charger you're charging on, you're gonna have a good time if you follow the directions. Charge safe in a LiPo bag. Use a LiPo alarm, whatever type it is, only when in use. Charge at the right current rate for your battery. Again, you are always safe with 1C, which is simply your amp hours in 
amps. So 5, 2.2, 1.5, or in the case of the small graphene, 0.95, rounding up to 1 is acceptable. Hope this was really helpful for everybody. Please let me know if you have questions in the comments. I will be sure to answer them because safety is super important to me. Always read your manual. Follow these instructions and you'll have a good time. I do sell both of these chargers on my website. Links will be below as well. Appreciate your continued support. Until next time, I'm out of darts.